Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again, and it is Saturday. Um, y'all, my furnace still ain't fixed yet, but I got some guys to come and check it out. Um, hopefully it'll be fixed the early part of this week, so just pray for that for me. Um, still trying to get these videos out to you guys because it's highly important. So it's that time again for... Uh, my weekly matchup. So, as you guys know, we are playing the Minnesota Vikings at home Sunday night football. Um, it's a, cow a home game for the Dallas Cowboys, so that's always a good thing. Um, you you're playing with your in front of your home crowd and playing against Kirk Cousins. Now, this is the first time we're playing against Kirk Cousins on a team other than the Redskins. Kirk Cousins comes into this. Um, He's like, what, 1-6 against the Cowboys? Now, granted, he's on a different team. The Vikings have much more of a firepower than the Redskins ever had. So it's going to be a different scenario. But we're going to get into that. So as we look at our helmets here, boom, head-to-head -head matchup, baby. Let's do it. Um, it's going to be a good game. Uh, I, you know, some people out there say that these teams are pretty well matched. I say that I believe that in some aspect, but not everything. Now, Everybody's high on their young running back, Dalvin Cook. He's uh, leading the NFL right now in rushing. But Zeke don't care because Zeke knows that he's the best, <laughs> the real best running back in the league. Now, I give Dalvin Cook his credit. You know, um, he's doing well for Minnesota over there. But, you know, he's worried about his numbers. Ezekiel Elliott is not worried about his numbers. He's worried about much more than that. It's much more than that at stake for Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott said himself, hey, you know, we're trying to get to the playoffs. We're trying to get that chip, baby. We're trying to get to the bowl. We don't care about individual stats. Now, even Dak Prescott said, you know, the Dallas Cowboys are, you know, leading the league in yards per game um, in all total offense. But he don't care about that. He doesn't. Um, and he's not satisfied with the offense that play, you know, including him. You know what I mean? We've all made mistakes. You know, this is what he said. You know, um, we shot ourselves in the foot. So the Cowboys got to do better with that. But I will get into more of that throughout this video. Now, as we go into this, we know the Cowboys are 5-3. and three. The Minnesota Vikings are 6-3. and three. Um, Cowboys were coming off their bye, um, beat the, the New York Giants on Monday Night Football. Kind of sloppy in the beginning. Um, you could tell that they were rusty from that time off, but they got it together in the end. Going forward, though, I said this before. This is a tough stretch coming up. You got the Vikings. <clears throat> you got the Patriots. You got the Bills. You got the Bears. You got all these guys in the month of November right after each other. You're talking about two Thursday night games, including Thanksgiving and um this Sunday night game here and then you know the Patriots uh next week so guys look it, it, it's 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 a tough stretch coming down so Cowboys better be ready for it I know they will be um but they definitely have to stop the slow starts that they're they're having in the beginning of the games because it's not conducive to them winning games and you know you're asking your quarterback to consistently push you back through um, from either falling from behind or trying to keep pace when you could have put a lot of these teams out in the beginning. Now, pretty much all of their, their wins were from division games this year. Um, the only team outside that was the Dolphins that you really beat. Um, but you, you got to get more non-conference games. You got to get in-conference games that are non-divisional um, because all of these games matter when it comes to getting playoff seeds and things of that nature because you want to make sure that you are um, getting the right seed and getting into the playoffs because, again, ain't no time for playing around no more. This is the second half of the season now starting, and you got to get you got to get it to go. Um, just a couple of numbers here. So, you know, we play Sunday night, 8.20 p.m. Eastern time. I guess that's 7.20 um, Cowboys time. Um I said this, Curse Cousins is 1-6 one, one versus the Cowboys in his career, which was, you know, all in with the Redskins. So none of that really matters now. His, his stakes pretty much start over. But he's still the same quarterback, and I'm going to talk about him in a minute too. Um, the Cowboys right now are 5th in offense, 5th in defense, 8th in passing, and 5th in rushing. So we're pretty much pretty much top 5 in everything right now. Um 
but you know they're not playing like it but that that's all because of you know mistakes being made not catching the ball penalties um drop passes things of that nature so um you look at the Vikings they're 6 in offense they're 15th in total defense which um they play actually better than that on defense. Well, the defensive line is is their bread and butter right now. And I'm going to talk about some of those guys, too, because they, they got some monsters on their defensive line. Um, passing their uh, 14th and rushing their second, thanks to Dalvin Cook. And in the beginning the part of the season, they were running the ball solely, which is the reason why um, Adam Thielen and Stefan Diggs, um, they voiced their opinions on how come they weren't getting the ball and things of that nature. And they forgot about uh, uh, Rudolph because I had him in fantasy early and you had to drop him because they weren't even using him at all. And they weren't even using a tight end. And I'm like, this is crazy. So um, the way they're running, but they're, they're definitely run first. They are definitely run first. And um, I noticed that they use, and, 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 and I know this contradicting myself, but the fact that they didn't use Rudolph, you would think that the way that they line up on offense, because I was watching some of their plays, like they, they line up more of their tight ends than they do in packages more than they do their, their wide receivers, which is weird. I don't see many teams running their offense like that. That's a very unique way of doing it. But, you know, Mike Zimmer, even though he's a defensive minded guy, Mike Zimmer is now the coach of the Vikings. If you guys don't know who Mike Zimmer is, he's he was with the Cowboys as a defensive assistant for 13 years. Um, well, he's been with the staff for 13 years and for the Dallas Cowboys during the um, Dave Campo and Bill Parcells days. Um, those of you that are um, diehard Cowboy fans, you know what I'm talking about. So Mike Zimmer, more than anything right now, wants to come back and beat his old team and, and things of that nature and get bragging rights. But guess what? Cowboys ain't gonna let that happen. Um, let D Law tell you it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> um, it's funny because his mom actually told him, "Hey, chill out, bro. You 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 cursing too much. You talking about people too much. Just let your play speak for itself." There you go, mama. There you go, mama. But we all love Billboard material anyway. So I mean, you know, to each his own, I guess. You know, what mama says go right. Um, Kirk Cousins for the season right now, he's uh, 246.3 uh, pass, passing yards per game. He has 16 touchdowns and three interceptions and 112 passer rating. Now, we know that uh, Kirk Cousins is a guy that uh, is very sometimey. He's a very fickle quarterback. One day he might show up real well, and another day you're like, what in the hell? One thing about him is um, he's going to give you a gift. Uh, he's going to make mistakes. Um, and that's one of the keys to victory right there is applying pressure to him and frustrating him because in crunch time, he chokes a lot. And he has a tendency to, and I'm going by his days at, at the Redskins and some of the games he had this season as well too. Now he's had some really good games. You know, they, they you know, I think they beat the Eagles. They beat the Eagles. So, you know, but I guess that's not saying much because we beat the Eagles as well. But, um he has games where he will show up and then he would completely disappear in another game. You're like, what the hell? None of this makes sense. Um, but you look at Dak Prescott right now, he's a uh, 297.5 yards passing uh, per game. Um, his numbers are always up and down because of, you know, uh, them trying to catch up in games and things of that nature because they faltered in the beginning. And then all of a sudden they beast in the second half. So a lot of Dak's, um, Stats come from the second half of games. Um, Dak Prescott had 15 touchdowns, 18, in, oh no, eight interceptions. I'm sorry, Lord knows. Um, and 102 uh, passer rating. Now, Dak Prescott's passer rating has always been up there. Now, um, you know, when you're a quarterback, you know, whether the guy catches the ball or not, whether he's the reason for the interception, things of that nature. Now, Dak took chances this year. I don't mind the fact that he has a higher interception rate as long as you win. And and I'm looking at his numbers. His numbers are better. You look at Dak Prescott before, he was much he was a much more cautious player. And Scott Linhead held him, not allowing him to be himself. You know, they always say you can't um, – make an omelet without cracking a couple of eggs. Sometimes you throw some interceptions when you take chances. Look at Tony Romo. Tony Romo was a gunslinger all day. He had a lot of interceptions, but he also had a lot of great plays too and a lot of touchdowns. So um, it's give and take. Now, 
Sometimes his 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 interceptions are self inflicted. Sometimes it's just miscommunication with receivers, and other times it's freak plays where the the receiver will catch the ball and the defensive guy will make a good play and knock it out their hand and it'll fly up in the air and then it's free gimmies to the defense. And you know, but again, regardless of if it's the quarterback's fault if he throws an interception, it's it's pretty much always his fault. Um, in that aspect, now. You look at these running backs. Now, we talked about Dalvin Cook being a leader in rushing right now and um, him trying his best to beat out Ezekiel Elliott through all aspects of whatever. But, you know, Ezekiel Elliott don't care about that because he, he knows where he's at. Now, Dalvin Cook is has 23.3 touches per game. Um, he's averaging 99.3 rushing yards per game. And uh, he has nine rushing touchdowns. It's a one-man wrecking crew over there. They don't have, like, a young stud like the Cowboys do with Tony Pollard. So, you know, numbers are skewed. So when you look at numbers sometimes, a lot of times you have to know that team and see what they're doing visually to understand, okay, he might be doing this, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not as great as you think it is. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, he has uh, 22.8 touches per game, 92.6 yards, uh, rushing yards per game, and he has six rushing touchdowns. Now, again, he has six rushing touchdowns, despite of the fact that we have an uptick um, with throwing the ball more and shared time with Tony Pollard. Those are still great numbers, considering the fact that he's sharing with a young guy. And I think that that's good what they're doing right now because they're keeping Zeke fresh. Zeke has said all year long so far that he feels fresh. He's not as tired as he was before because the... Uh, it's a shared effort when it comes to these um, touches. And then Dak is throwing the ball more, which is great because you have to help. You have to have a healthy um, balance of both. You can't be one dimensional. You can't allow another team to make you one di to dimensional. Now, a fun fact here: Dak Prescott is has 14, 14 primetime game wins. Since entering the NFL in 2016. Now that's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, you gotta give him a hand clap for that. Now, I know that the Cowboys play a lot of primetime games, so he has the opportunity to have those. But still, winning a primetime game is, is harder than you think it is because it's, you know, you're the only thing on TV at that time. So everybody's watching you. So it's that added pressure, um, things of that nature. So we just know that Dak Prescott, you know. I got all faith in my quarterback. Is he perfect? No. Is any quarterback perfect? No. Because Tom Brady messes up all the time, too. So it is what it is. But nobody talks about it. Um, Pat Mahomes ain't perfect. He's great. He's elite. But he's not perfect. Nobody is. No human being is perfect. But I look at Dak, and I bet on Dak all the time because that's my quarterback. I love his leadership. I love the fact that he doesn't throw people on the bus. He takes ownership for things on this team. And he's always trying to be better. He, you know, he's comes early, stays late. He's always practicing with his receivers and running backs and things of that nature. So, and he's motivating his guys. I see him when he's mic'd up. He's out there talking. He's boisterous. He's doing his thing as a quarterback, unlike some other teams. Uh, you look at other guys that were drafted his year. What they doing? They ain't doing nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't see Paxton Lynch. What happened to uh, uh, Mettenberg? What, what happened to these guys? This guy gone. They ain't even in the league no more. They couldn't even hack it in the daggone um, minor leagues or whatever. The, the AA, AA, FCC, DDFG, HIJK, LMNLP, whatever other leagues there were, they couldn't make it in there either. So um, at the end of the day, Dak Prescott is my quarterback. Now, you, 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 you can not like him if you don't want to. And I value your opinion. I value all of your guys' opinion. You guys know I respect all of that. But – when we have an argument, or not an argument, but when we have a discussion or a debate, let's be educated about it. If you don't like him, give me a reason why you don't like him, and we'll talk about it. And I'm like, okay, I feel you. I don't, I don't, I don't hate any anybody's opinions that think different than me or think differently than what this team is going. Now, just so you guys know, on this channel, it's like 50% my opinion and 50% what facts like what it really is what the team is doing and my observations on what they're doing so it's not always just my opinion so as a youtuber i'm not a biased person i am not a homer by any means because again if it if it don't smell right 
it don't smell right. If it walk like a duck, talk like a duck, it's a duck. And I will tell you that it's a duck. So, um, yeah, that's what it is. I just, I just give it to you in the most realest form that I can, guys. Now, you look at this Vikings defensive line led by... Daniel Hunter. Now his name is spelled like Danielle. So if you don't if you don't know how it's pronounced, you'll be like, hey, there's a guy named Danielle on the team. <laughs> but no, it's Daniel Hunter. Um he's only 24 years old. Now you guys remember when he got signed for his second contract. That was around that time when the Cowboys was like, oh, we're gonna have to pay D Law. But you look at his contract, that five year, $72 million contract that he signed a couple of years back, or last year was I think. I don't remember. It's, it's, it's been a while. Um, it feels like it's been a while. It feels like it's been a while. Um, that contract don't look like it's big anymore, con considering what D Law gets right now. Um, and Daniel Hunter's numbers are much better than D Law's are right now. But you know, it's a different situation. Now, Daniel Hunter is a monster. I and and you know me, I give credit where credit is due. Yes, I'm diehard Cowboys all day, but. As a YouTuber, I'm not biased, and I have to speak what it is. Daniel Hunter is a beast. He's a monster. Um, I didn't know this guy was going to be like this coming out of college. If I would have known that, I would have been like, oh, Cowboys, I need to draft him. But, you know, it is what it is. It happens like that. Um, he ha At 24 years old, he has 40 career sacks, 52 tackles for loss, three forced fumbles, and this season alone, he has eight and a half sacks which is, I think, not only leading his team, but um, he's, uh, I think, leading the NFL. Uh, well, one of the leading NFL. I don't know what other sack numbers are, but I know it's up there. I think our highest sack total right now is Robert Quinn, and I think that's six and a half. But we have a lot of different good guys on our team. So to make a comparison to our defensive front to other teams, we just have a lot of good players as opposed to, one or two greats. Now, Vikings got a couple of guys. It ain't just it ain't just Daniel Hunter, but Daniel Hunter is your guy. That I mean, he don't he don't use a lot of like trickery when he he ain't spinning and doing all that stuff. This dude is power rushing offensive lineman to get to that quarterback. He's like a damn Kodiak bear on on the Vikings defensive line when it comes to getting to the quarterback. He's getting there. And and <laughs> quick fast in a hurry you feel me it, it ain't it ain't it ain't just um oh well we're gonna block the neil hunter guys we're just gonna go ahead and block him and, and it's just gonna be cool and no mm -mm. Mm -mm. you gotta be on your a game with the neil hunter and um he play on that i guess if you're facing them i guess that's the left side of their line the right side of our line so you know uh lyle collins better be ready guys Cause um that uh he's gonna be coming strong, hard, fast, things of that nature. Um yeah. <laughs> um they got another guy named Everson Griffin. He has sixty six point five sacks um in nine seasons, and um he's right behind this guy um in, in when it comes to sacks. Now Everson Griffin, another big body guy that, that's gonna get to you. Uh Quick, these guys are all high motor. They don't play no games. They get to the quarterback. Um, Linville Joseph, you guys know who Linville Joseph is. Um, he's he's been in the league for a little while now. Um, he has forty four career tackles for loss and twenty one sacks in his career. And again, he's he's that he's that guy. He's that big body dude, like a refrigerator with arms. These dudes are 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 strong. They see our defensive line is more smaller and quick and agile. These guys are big, brawly, brawly guys. Um, but the way that you block these guys is not just head up man to man. Um, our offensive line, and I think that what Kellen Moore needs to do and and with with uh, Mark Colombo, our offensive line coach, they need to come together. And I'm pretty sure they've done this because, again, they're football-minded guys as well. They're way better than me. I'm just – I'm a fan that's played football before. So I get the game. I know it well. But – at the same time, the way that you counteract big body guys like that is you know that our offensive line is 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 um it's another key guys. <laughs> you know that our offensive line is is great at um they're very athletic and mobile. So when our line starts pulling, 
it, we create holes and we create just blocks off the edges and then with with um um my opinion Zeke is the best um blocker running back uh, blocker in the league I, I I just think that you know his, his vision and his awareness when it comes to pass blocking is is great so um get Ezekiel in there help pass block get um, Dalton Schultz in there, help pass block, get these guys out, get this offensive line shifting. When our offensive line pulls, um, we can gain, we can get, we can get gain ground. We can get TP up in there running. We can get Zeke Elliott in there running. Hell, we can get Olawale up in there running. They don't use them, but you know, let's do it. But my whole thing is this. That's how you counteract that defense in the way that they're running the ball. I mean, the way that they're attacking your offense. Now, that is going to be the biggest challenge for the Cowboys is keeping Dak upright this game. Now, they, the offensive line did a re really good job in that Giants game with keeping Dak upright. But in this game, they're going to have to make sure that they stop these guys from getting the Dak Prescott because, again, um, his sack numbers have been low, which is good. Dak got sacked 56 times last season, and I think only like, what, 12, 10, 12, something like that. It's a lower number this year. So um, that's a good thing. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with our line call, our line calls and, and um, Travis Frederick being back as well because he he's that general on that offensive line. Now, we do still have our injuries and things of that nature, but these guys have been resting and doing their thing and trying to get their knees and, and elbows and backs and all types of stuff rehab. So I think we'll be good to go. Um. Now, you look at the Vikings back end. You know, they got Xavier Rhodes back there. They got Trey Waynes. I think that if um, Amari Cooper plays in this game, which I think he should, uh, I think he will. Um, they they said that his injury is manageable. We'll see how that, what that, I don't even know what the hell that means. But anyway, because, um, you know, it's manageable. But you notice that when he's been playing in games, it's like, after the first couple of plays in the game, it gets hurt and comes out for a minute and comes back in. But I just pray that, you know, everything is good with him and he plays. Now, if Amari Cooper plays this game, um, I, I think there's a lot of plays to be. Now, Xavier Rhodes is a good a good DB. But the way that Amari Cooper and his route run, I think that there's plays to be made on both of these DBs. And uh, whether it's Trey Wayne's checking him, whether it's um, uh, Xavier Rhodes checking him. So either way. Um, it's going to give, even if they try to double him and if, they, if the Cowboys use him as a decoy, I think Michael Gallup, I, this is my bold prediction. Michael Gallup is going to have a big game and Randall Cobb is going to get into the end zone. Randall Cobb is not going to get called for no penalties and he's going to catch that ball. And, you know, again, and I, and I feel like, you know, people have been down on Randall Cobb because they think, oh, he sucks now. He's not the same as he was before. Look, it's just some freak things that's just been happening with him. And I don't think that that has anything to do with his skills. Him and Dak are close right now, and they've been working with each other. So I think that um, things are going to be good on that standpoint. We just got to keep it moving. We just got to be patient, guys. Um, I, I'm still I'm still high on Randall Cobb. And I think him and Gallup are going to have a really good game, despite of – you know, if Amari Cooper has a great game or not himself. But if if they do try to double team or bracket or more likely bracket, if they bracket Amari Cooper, that's just going to – you got one-on-one -on -one coverage with these other guys. So um, there's plays to be made out here, guys. Um, if they try to stop our run, which is what they're going to try to do, um, with, with, with big with big Daniil Hunter and Griffin and, and Joseph out there, they're going to try to do some things with their defensive front. And try to stop Ezekiel Elliott, but it's okay because you got TP, you got these guys. You can throw it out the back, um, throw it out the um, throw it out the backfield. You can you can throw the ball over their head. Now, one thing about this defense, Mike Zimmer, again, he's a head coach now, but he's he's a defensive minded coach. The way that they blitz, and this is how this is another key. This is another way that you get the, their defense outside of pulling your offensive line. When they rush, they rush everybody. They're they're bringing the house, so that's fine. Go ahead, and bring the house. Ezekiel Elliott get that um, pick up that blitz. They pick up that blitz. Get Dak in a, 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 a second or two. Get that quick pass on the outside, wide open lanes. Get them on that wheel route. That's a twenty, at least a twenty yard gain right there. 
Um, so there's ways to beat this defense, and and I think that um, the Cowboys are going to come out on top regardless because of the simple fact that Kirk Cousins just is not um, – I just don't have faith in him as a quarterback to put away the Dallas Cowboys. I think that it's going to be a good game. In the beginning, you're going to see these, get, these teams go back and forth. Um, the Vikings are without Adam Thielen, so that's another top threat that they don't have that the Cowboys don't have to worry about in this game. But – um, the thing is, if you get Kirk Cousins confidence, he's going to play well, but if you pressure him and apply that pressure on him, he's going to throw the ball out of bounds. He's going to make stupid mistakes and he's going to give you one. You might get an interception too. So I think this might come down to, uh, the kickers, but I still think the Cowboys win by 10. I, my, my, uh, my prediction is Cowboys 31, um, uh, Vikings 21. So, uh, let me know what you guys think in the, uh, comments, um, if, if there's Viking fans in here too as well, shout out to you guys. Res much respect to you guys as well. Um, it's going to be a really good game, guys. So let's see what we can do. Um, but with that being said, thanks again to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, get this content. It's your boy, YouTube Blue. Always keeping it real.